one would really want to know that uh, you essentially began as a different company or business model altogether and you know you know and over the course as the business evolved you changed or you maybe you grew from something as a business concept to being the largest mobile advertising network now Mm-hmm. This happens to a lot of companies. For instance, Make My Trip, which essentially began as an NRI ticketing portal sure. to what it is right now. Sure. So for entrepreneurs, you know, which began a different idea and over the course of their business, completely morph into a different idea altogether. Yeah. So what is your experience been? What can you share with entrepreneurs? Well, I think there are a couple of things there. One is, uh, you know, what's the goal with which an entrepreneur is actually coming out with what he's doing, right? Is the goal... Uh, you know, to build something small is the goal to, you know, build something that's going to change the world, if it's going to be something which is going to be huge. You know, when we came out to try and do this, the goal was to say, hey, you know, we are, you know, we have great jobs, we don't necessarily need to worry about those things, but we really want to do something that's going to impact the world. Um, And uh, to begin with, it's going to impact the country. Uh, And therefore, let's go out and do and take some risks in doing that because the journey is what's the fun. The whole fun is in the journey and trying to do something which is large. And therefore, when the early model we were trying, we figured very soon that the larger goal with which we came out with, we wouldn't be fulfilling. We wouldn't be fulfilling the goal of creating something impactful. It would be a decent business and we didn't want to necessarily get into this. Um, And therefore, we said, hey, we should not do it. It was a very emotional discussion and decision and we decided not to go ahead with that and we cut it off and moved on to uh, you know uh, the business that we are in today which is a mobile advertising network uh, they, and you know our whole belief was that the world is going to go through a change and this is back in 2007 2008 when we felt that the world is going to go through a change in uh, where every user will be on mobile phone using co- you know consuming content from mobile phones and you know i think it's already starting to happen and the, a large part of the world is essentially consuming a significantly increasing amount of content from their phones and therefore that's something you know we're enjoying. Interesting. So it's really about an idea at the end of the day or it's about execution one can argue. I think it's uh, it's about uh, it's not about the idea. I think it's about execution and I think even before that it's about your passion and your thinking. And I think you know we talk about this a lot even internally is how can we continue to think big? You know, we are all coming from, most of us are coming from a middle class background. And, you know, when we grew up, we were told not to necessarily think big and not to necessarily believe in, you know, the, the big things were, were, were supposedly supposed to be done by others. Um, and uh, to try and change that mindset has been an important aspect for us. Um, therefore, I think it's more important that, you know, unless until you're putting out a goal which is larger and then backing up, backing it up with extremely strong execution, you won't be getting there. Mm-hmm. Thinking big meaning what? In terms of, you know, think big to what extent? Well, it depends on the stage. And I think uh, it's, it's thinking big essentially is something that most others would be uncomfortable with. Um, it, it's a distortion of uh, a sort of where you want to get to and people will say, look, you're crazy about trying to get there and as a leader you have the ability to put that stake on the ground and say and convince a large portion of the people to rally behind a goal which to begin with just seemed impossible is something which I would call out as saying thinking big uh, and then as soon as you're starting to get there if you are that means you've done good execution as you start and get there change the goal post to something which is beyond it people don't People live not for getting into getting to the destinations, but they live to get to go through a journey. And I think that journey is something which, if you can give to people, uh, they thrive and they they kind of and you know a passion from within starts to come out. And that's what we try to do within our company, at least. So, what were you thinking? What was your thought process? Okay, let's shelve this idea. We are made for bigger things in life. What was the entire conversation amongst your employees, co-founders, your investors, other stakeholders? And how as an entrepreneur one can get that conviction? Look, I think, as I said, it was very emotional. It was a very emotional conversation because you're essentially saying, you know, basically the, the argument was the following. The guys, what we're going to do sounds interesting. Uh, but the reality is what we are trying to do is not going to be big. 
the question a very standard question on that would be how do you know that the next thing that you're going to do will be big you don't actually have a good answer to it you don't have a good answer to it but the only point you would make is what i know and what we made as part of our co-founding team is what we are doing today certainly doesn't seem to be getting us there so we at least have a better chance of making something bigger if we give it up uh, and i think it's the conviction and the trust that we had in each of us and our abilities to say that look we you know the life short and we got to do what we really wanted to and what we think we are you know destined to try and achieve for and therefore let's give it a shot and if it's not going to work out it's not going to work out but unless and until you give it a shot the next big thing's not going to come out and therefore we just went for it so you began as m coach right mobile search yep. and then into mobile advertising yeah does it have to say that search in mobile does not really stand as a trade business model well no i'm pretty sure it does but we we want the we couldn't figure out how to make it big mm-hmm. uh, and i'm pretty sure that uh, there are other companies who are making it big today mm-hmm. uh, i think you also have to see you know your own con- in your own context are you able to make it big and we want we didn't think that we could are you big enough now where you've reached in your life in the company no absolutely not i think i think you know over the next 4 to 5 years i think there is so much more to achieve the market is going the the, the space in which we are i think that's going to go grow 10x uh, we have to do a lot more i think you know we are happy with where we are today but i think uh, the the journey is you know just beginning how big can in mobi become really i mean what is your ultimate vision for in mobi well you know without trying to put in numbers necessarily out there i would say our next goal essentially uh, is to be one of the most dominant mobile advertising mobile internet company in the world period and that's what we want to be we want to be in the mobile internet space we want to be one of the largest companies out there um uh, if if i look at what does it mean from numbers etc i think over the next few years we would love to get to you know billions of dollars in revenue um, and that's what we'll try to do over the next and that's where you know our execution plans are oriented towards those things and let's see if we get there and once we get there we'll we'll, we'll you know we'll get to look at the next uh, goal post so how are you geared for that what exactly your expansion plan a lot of what we are trying to do uh, focuses around people mm-hmm. uh, it's a very high intensity technology company etc therefore uh um, you know we are we are investing a lot in our tech uh, technology engineering etc that's what that's one of the areas where there's a lot of investments going on the second which which we are doing is essentially you know we want to be everywhere in the world uh therefore we are launching newer markets literally by the week and when i say launching newer markets those are not the markets where we just have our service but those are the markets where also now we're putting up new offices with people such that we can build great deeper relationships we are doing that the third thing we're doing very aggressively is looking at acquisitions and we i think at this point of time we are in conversations with at least 5 to 7 companies that we're looking to uh figure out if they could be part of inmobi and they we could then kind of build it uh you know kind of use them to grow faster okay so the largest global player mobile internet company in the world Is yeah. that the vision? Yeah. And who are your global comparables? Uh it's Google, uh um uh, it's um uh, Apple to a certain extent. Um So what is Inmobi? What is Inmobi revolutionizing? I think we're going to revolutionize the whole world around uh, uh mobile platforms and uh, we I think we're going to create uh, create applications and create an infrastructure on top of which applications can be created which will basically create employment, uh, create new business models. um uh, allow for new ways of content consumption across the world to happen and i think we'll we want to be one of the most important one of the most important players as part of that ecosystem and i think you know the stage at the at which the industry is today and where it will be 4 to 5 years down the line you know it's a huge huge space that we're talking about why to choose the prioritizing as a business over other we, businesses we basically you know we we the way we thought about this was to say that look mobile internet is going to be big mm-hmm. and what are some of the very critical aspects of an internet economy very critical aspects of an internet economy to take off is you there will be content so there there needs to be users so that means you know the data platform the data layer has to be there uh, the devices have to be there and all of those were taken care by others uh you know the likes of the operators likes of you know content like players Apple, etc etc so all of them were providing the platform this and that then on top of which all of this to be successful you needed content and for those content guys to be successful you basically need advertising as a very strong business model and payments as a very strong business model and we said look if and those are like you know infrastructure 
specific layers and therefore if we were to provide one of those layers we felt it will be a very strong uh, infrastructure layer on top of which businesses can be built and therefore we went into that and that, that's why advertising came about because advertising is one of the most important uh, tenets on which an economy uh, or internet economy has to has to evolve and therefore I think in the west you know content is a much larger business so you have companies like you know NY Times or Wall Street Journal sure. or CNET yeah. doing much bigger revenues of business unlike in India we see that you know content itself is a business particularly digital content and talking about advertising forms a very small portion of it sure. and, and in that digital con advertising you have mobile advertising catering to a further smaller pie absolutely. so how do you see those trends evolving it's absolutely right like you know i don't know whether it so in us yes it's a very very large market i think india it will be a very large market you just have users coming in uh, using content on their devices uh, i think it's just a matter of time before ad dollars really move big time into mobile and i think we are already starting to see the early trends of that uh, typically advertising lags usage mm -hmm. by 12 to 24 months in mobile and therefore you know over the next 12 months or so we should start to see you know a very different order of magnitude of ad dollars coming into mobile in india and we are <coughs> and the reason why we are so confident about that is because we have seen it happen in other emerging markets and other developed markets where the dollars have already started to come in therefore you know we are very excited that india will also happen very soon at that point of time it will start to really take off become a very comparable or a larger market than other internet based services can you give us some examples of what really is happening in india in terms of what changes are you see so there there's one very specific change that we saw say about 12 months ago when the uh, data prices dropped Uh, mm -hmm. as the data prices dropped the usage just went through the roof across all operators across the whole ecosystem then the next uh, big shift we started to see as soon as this new category of handset uh, uh, arrived which were low uh, low priced uh, had all sorts of internet capabilities built in and suddenly there was a next wave of usage started to happen mm -hmm. now what i just talked about was usage the the, the on the on the uh, advertising side very recently we have started to see a avalanche of brands starting to uh, test out and starting to spend money on the mobile platform okay and i think that testing phase and you know some initial trials have been very successful therefore they will convert into much larger opportunities over the next 12 to 24 months and that's when this whole ecosystem will come together to give you the revenues and the opportunity that we all are hoping that we will get or you know that we should that we hope to expect from from this and that's Yeah, interesting. So you basically are a company founded by an Indian entrepreneur, someone like you, and yeah. of course you're not you're not essentially an India-based company, like you rightly mentioned. You mm -hmm. you want to be a global player, sure. multiple offices across various countries, yeah. raising money in that direction. Mm -hmm. So how much of your revenues really come from India? It's a very very small portion today. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not to say that on absolute level it's small. It's from a proportionate level it's small. Um, I think India should be one of our top five seven markets as we go along. Which is which is the which is the top market for you right now? It's US. It's the US market. So essentially, you are catering to the most mature markets in the You're world. Catering to right every now. market in the world. So right, you know, US, Japan, uh, Korea, uh, UK, France, Germany. Um, yeah. So India, so India has a long way to go, right? India has a way to go. Yes. Yeah. But what 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 helps India's cause is that the number of users are so large mm -hmm. that uh, you know as soon as the dollars start to come in this direction. it will take over a lot of these other markets and by the way our expectation is that in emerging markets like india china indonesia uh, parts of middle east parts of southeast asia even you know 3 years down the line africa all of these markets will basically not they're not they're not expected to have pc and therefore what will happen is that they will ac actually have mobile as the only device on which content consumption will happen mm -hmm. and therefore you know you will basically have a a, a whole um the whole pc based economy which will kind of be overshot and therefore you will go directly to mobile and therefore the dollars will there the dollars there will be just of a different magnitude and that's what we expect over the next few years okay i raised 20 million dollars i have this much money to invest in my company and how to justify that in terms of you know step by step in terms of what you're trying to achieve typically internet companies don't need a lot of money to mm. basically grow and you basically need it to buy inventory or something of that sort we don't have those costs but we still raised it and the and the reason why we raised it was basically this the space that we are in 
you know, it's going to be at least 30 to 50 billion dollar industry five years from now. How do we ensure that we are one of the only few players that are part of this? And how do we make sure that we invest so heavily, so deeply, that the competition just, it becomes impossible for the competition to stay with us. That's the, it's, it's about how do we ensure that we are winners, we take this level of capital, change the game, take it to the next level. And that's what it is about. We want to be one of the, as I said, we want to be one of the very key and important players when it basically becomes a, you know, when the, when the market matures three, three years down the line. At that point of time, we want to be there standing. Interesting. And, and leaving a lot of others behind for the future. Interesting. So when, when the conversation started, you said like two broader markets for mobile mm -hmm. as internet. One is advertising, other is payments. Yeah. So why not payments for you? There is payments. Mm -hmm. We just started, uh, we just launched our smart pay product. Uh, there are things that we're doing on the payment side. Um, it's obviously it's in the early stages. We'll see it grow over the next few years and we are very really excited about that. Yeah. More from the mature market perspective. Well, I think even in, in, I think across the board, you know, new payment methods are going to be evolved for mobile. We are investing very heavily into some of those. Um, you know, we'll see what comes out. But I think you know, the market's going to go through a change on that front and um, payments will be a very important aspect of our strategy also as we go along. So in terms of mobile advertising, you know, how much of it is like, you know, search advertising or display advertising we don't do or CPM? Or we you don't know? do any search. Okay. Because search is all Google. They, they are experts at that. Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, they are experts at that. They take care. You know, we don't own search inventory. We can't basically put ads on it. Uh, we basically take care of, of display advertising mm -hmm, on mobile. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be, it's a very large segment in itself. So who are your competitors, major competitors it's across? It's Google. It's Google. Yeah. Okay. So how much of, you know, Google's uh, share have you, market share have you been able to garner? To it's now? hard because the third party numbers are not necessarily out there. We know that we are, uh, globally we are second to them. Uh, at, at the scale, uh, there are markets in like like there are markets in which we are larger than them. There are markets where we are smaller than them, uh, like Asia, Africa. Uh, you know, some of these markets we are larger than them. In Europe, we are very close to them. In Japan, we are very close to them. In US, we are s we, where we made an entry about a year, year and a half ago. We are the third largest player. So you know, it's it's a different positioning in different parts of the world. Latin America, we're number one. Uh, so there are different positioning in different parts of the world, and you know, we enjoy that, and we're just pushing the envelope on the innovation that we're doing in this space, which hopefully will start us to get into leadership positions across the world. Interesting. You also said that you basically wanted to do something in the deals segment. And what we're seeing right now in India, especially in the internet deal space, you know, one of the companies getting funded every other day. Sure. And I say this, you know, that I think there's a lot of, uh, I won't use the word hype, because, you know, I personally feel that maybe there's some real businesses being built online. Sure. And just because there are businesses being built online, you just can't really discount them. What do you think about these valuations, like a billion dollar, two billion dollar valuation for these kind of e-commerce companies in India, which is established like three years, two years back? I think, you know, whether you look at the deal or you look at e-commerce, I think it's all e-commerce. Yeah. It's all about commerce, right? So, uh, and I think in India, with the infrastructure not being that great, mm -hmm. uh, and product, and if you can provide great products and services, People would love to essentially stay at home, uh, order stuff, and you know, it's just people have more time to be at home. They have more time to be with the family. They can be more productive. All of those nice things and price advantages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, it's the logical model. So I don't think there is any issue on that. Yes, you will have competition, which is great. Which means every, there will be few players standing, few players not there. There will be consolidation in the market. You know. Four or five years down, you will have you know three to five players mm -hmm. uh, who will be there. It will end up creating a market of three to five players, uh, and that's how the, the you know that's where the market will be. And if you look at China as an example of where mm -hmm. the market is, yes, the companies may not be making money, but it's not about ma making money today. But it's about getting the market share, getting users hooked onto the system, and once they are, then you have a great business opportunity to build out there. You also invest in personal capacity, investing in companies like Money Sites and Metal. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned that. How is that coming along? And what I think they're doing outstanding work. Both of these companies are looking at. One is looking at the financial space. Other is looking at the um, at the uh, learning and assessment space. And I think they're doing fantastic work. The the way I actually look at this is, I'm not an investor. You know, at the end of the day, I am I'm an entrepreneur. 
uh, I love to spend time, I am a junkie for ideas, I love to spend time with uh, you know people who are brainstorming and doing new things um, and you kind of put your stake on the ground by you know putting in some money uh, but you are essentially putting it towards things that you really enjoy. The other important part which you know people look at it saying hey I think you know that you know you guys are investing that means you will give great advice. I think it is the other way. I think when new companies are getting created they are the ones that are giving you insights that you can actually use in your own business because they are pushing the envelope today on the thinking on new markets on new approaches. You have done that few years ago. So while you can give them some bits of advice from your experience of what w went right or wrong, I think there is a large component of of the thing that they are doing that you need to learn from or re relearn and make sure that you are continually on top of it which I think is even more important. So I think it's, it is so much more about uh, you know just the enjoyment love of being with some of these entrepreneurs as against about investing. You know you have successfully raised like second round of funding now. So series C. Series C. How did you manage that? I think the uh, for any investor the real investment happens and especially of this size when they see alignment on the vision and they are bullish on the space that you are in. You know SoftBank is a great example of somebody who is extremely bullish on the mobile space. You know, they are completely you know in the mobile space. They are they are completely bullish on that the whole mobile internet is going to be a it's going to be the largest space ever ever which means that important infrastructure tenets need to be built out. Clearly we are one of the leaders in the world today who are building it out. With their support what we are going to try and ensure that we are one of the you know one of the very very important players in that ecosystem over a period of time. They bought, they they, there was a complete alignment on that vision and therefore rest of everything becomes a means of trying to achieve uh, that larger goal and therefore that is that's where we are today and we are, we are trying to move forward extremely aggressively and trying to take it to the next level. Interestingly raising capital is also a very important decision in the life of an entrepreneur uh -huh. you know when you raise capital and the timing to raise the capital. Sure. So how does one arrive at that decision in terms of you know is it is it more of a function of driven by the interest and offers you receive from private equity or VC investors kind of valuation you achieve what is it really? I think you know I do not think that is the case I think it is uh, about when you know that you know that you are re ready to take the next large leap and in order to take the next large leap you need new set of resources at the table uh, and we realized that over the last six months or so that we were in that zone of taking that leap and therefore we went out to raise the capital. Um, it helps if the market is uh, positively inclined towards these business models. So for example India obviously as you said I put out there is a huge hype around e-commerce businesses. I think globally the hype is so much around mobile businesses yeah. uh, because you know e-commerce has been done already outside um, and therefore the, in the, the investments are more around you know what can happen next on mobile. Uh, and therefore uh, you know there was a huge excitement around what we were looking to do. Can you share some numbers with us in terms of you know the market potential? I think just on mobile advertising the, by 2014-2015 the market just on mobile advertising expected to be about 25 to 30 billion dollars a year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know on mobile payments I think in at that same time period there will be about 300 billion dollars of mobile transactions that will happen of which 200 billion dollars of transactions would be on uh, digital goods. So we are talking of numbers which just are just humongous, humongous uh, and there are reports out there which actually even put a claim to say uh, there are chances that these numbers could be dwarfed uh, and that Asia could be uh, the leader across this. Now these are just emerging reports because you know the, the, the speed with which this whole space is changing uh, it is hard to kind of pen down exactly what is going to happen uh, especially for analysts uh, in a very predictable manner. I think given that we are in it we you know I think we feel far more excited uh, than even the reports that come out. Interest talking about digital content in America which is what you deal on a daily basis mm -hmm. which is what you monetize on a daily basis of living for your organization. You know in terms of you know the kind of broader trend that we are seeing you know globally in the economy you know in terms of the way the media is being consumed. Yeah. News for instance you know 
or uh, information sure. at large. So what are going to broad trend? So from a content consumption pattern perspective, you basically will have uh, you know the, the magazines and the newspapers and you know new digital content appearing on your phone, so you're going to consume that. I think the next one which is going to happen very soon is it's video. So I think you know your television, your video on demand is all going to happen on, on, on these devices. And so uh, there will be usage movement from there to uh, these platforms. Um, and that would lead to a new new kind of ad dollar expense, uh, ad dollar uh, ad dollars uh, on video, which will essentially be directly coming from the TV budgets, which are of a very different order of magnitude. And I think that's certainly happening. Um, at least those that's a trend we expect and we see in uh, in markets like uh, markets like India. Cloud computing sure. piece coming along on the go access. I, well, I think you know the cloud computing piece is important because when when the content consumption is going to happen, look, I can create a service today, and it can get consumed anywhere in the world. And if that's going to happen, you basically need a lot of this to essentially allow for it to happen. Now, it could be content uh, which which is sitting. So today, I use my phone to access all the. Um, all the files that I have on my computer because I don't keep a single file on my computer anymore because all my files are kept up in in the cloud all my notes that I take when I whenever I'm in meetings I could take it from any device that I have it's not kept on a phone on, on any device anymore so basically storage and devices have basically become you know disaggregation there has been disaggregation of the two so everything gets stored in the cloud Similarly, what you're essentially going to get to is you're going to extend this and you're going to now start to see that happen on television where television will be a screen. So I can watch that same video on my iPad and I'll watch it on my television or my phone because I'm not keeping the, the content anymore in one of these places. It's actually some, somewhere up there and it's getting streamed. And you know, you're going to basically extend this model to the next level and that's essentially what's happening today any entrepreneur goes through you know various highs and lows in building an organization a company and for someone like you who's been so young you know having gone through that cycle what are the kind of learning that you've had in terms of you know, real high points and low points i think you know some of you know the highs have been fairly well documented out there whether it's you know raising capital um re, you know kind of going out and uh, building of these multiple offices uh, capturing some large deals I think some of the ones which are not so well document, documented are uh, our ability to is eventually build teams uh, in these local mar markets with local people uh, and having that scaling that well I think it's a very important factor that we feel was great for us I think from a low perspective some of the early early ones were around the fact that you know for our first business model didn't work out uh, that we uh, when we went out to raise money, whenever we have went out to raise money in India, we have not necessarily succeeded that well, um, which has hurt our ability, especially in the beginning, from our confidence. Uh, that was a very low period for us when you know we went out to, for our Series A to all the investors in India, and we were basically shown the door because nobody believed that uh, users will use mobile phones for accessing internet. Um, and so we felt very low because as an entrepreneur, you got to imagine that you know you're always living, you're always trying to do something where uh, the outcomes not necessarily, uh, it's not, it might not be what you're expecting it to be, and therefore you're looking for validation. And uh, the way the world is, you know, a lot of the validation needs to come from a venture capitalist, and if it doesn't, you feel very low. So I think that was uh, obviously one of the, the one of the big ones. Um, I would say outside of that, uh, you know, you know, we haven't we haven't had too much of uh, too many of those. But thank you, Naveen. Thank you so much for talking to me, Sir. Thank you. Really. So